cousin it. Share a video today with a straight razor. Um, I just wanted to show everybody what my mame looks like. Not as pretty as this, but um, this is mine. So we're going to do a, a shave with um, a ERN. It's a show and tell for an ERN. So we will get into that um, quickly. Just want to get all the little hairs off my hand. First, the brush I'm going to use, you guys haven't seen one. This is a Chubby 2 with this um, orange handle, or what they call butterscotch. This is a uh, best. It's a 28 millimeter, very dense knot. I'm going to use this one. This brush has been floating like a fish in my sink. Totally submerged to make sure it's it's properly wet to the pore. <clears throat> soap I'm going to use, um, Fernando Master Soap Creations Night on the Town Tallow Based Soap. It's got a subtle scent to it. Enjoy it. So I'm going to start loading while I talk about the razor. And halfway through the loading, I'll uh, show you guys the razor. So. Carl Frieder Earn, as some of you will know, know is my favorite razor manufacturer. And there's a simple reason for that. Um, that's the man that invented the hex machine, which is the device used to hollow grind razors. More specifically, he's the man that also came to realize that a thicker belly or stability behind the cutting edge is important when you've got ultra thin grinds. So by now, you, if you haven't, I'll, I'll put the link up here for uh, the shave I did and it's more talk about um, what, what straight razor to get. And in there, um, we talk about steels and, and so forth, but also bellies in razors. And I explain why. So if you're interested in that, there's the video. So Carl Frieder, um, I can't remember when he was born. It's really not important, but in 1880, he... Uh, he was already making um, a lot of razors under many, many brands. In fact, if you go and look at brands that was made and with the Carl Frieder urn, it's actually astonishing. This, I think more than 80 different brands. So you'll get in the um, 1166 Ator. Crown and Sword, Crown and Eagle, um, Hamburg Ring. Uh, there are many others. I'm, I can't remember them, I'm not going to list them, but it is um, evident that the way he made razors made a difference and hence um, the popularity behind them. I've loaded some soap, I'm not done yet. I quickly want to show you the razor. I actually got this razor for quite cheap. This is the, uh, the crown and sword version. It's a 6 8 blade. Uh, I have an extra hollow grind and it's got some engraving on the blade face. Very, very cool. Razor, extra hollow grind, and I'm not sure if you can see on the blade that reflection where the belly sits. If you run your fingers down here, you will feel that pronounced belly. So, as I say, this is um, 
1166. Another thing you would notice is black and brown. So I believe this razor sat in a shelf actually when you wet it it becomes a bit darker um, but if you look closely it was brown before we started. I've got a sneaky suspicion this razor was sitting in a shelf um, somewhere exposed to um, direct sunlight um, over a prolonged period of time and hence only the front. So, I've restored this razor and I'll put up a link here of that exact razor, the restoration um, and the honing behind it. So, if you're interested, go and check that out. Man, this brush is dense and what I like about it is it feels like it sucks onto your skin very dense the downside is they tend to take a long time to dry um, you need to make sure that they properly wet to the core but they are fantastic uh, brushes I haven't used this one in quite some time because here in winter um, they take long to dry back to the ERN so, in 1880, he invented the X machine to grind these things, but beforehand he was doing it by hand and why it was so popular with so many brands. So, if you find any of these brands in good condition, you can really go for them. They are awesome, awesome razors, all of them. Fernando soap, as usual, very, very good. This chubby loaded it um, very well and effortlessly. Um, getting the last bit of lather out might be a problem. But yes, plenty to go around. My skin's in a better condition. Because of cold condition, stress, diet, lots of other excuses, but essentially my skin wasn't great. It's looking a whole lot better now. So we are going to do a two-pass shave. Right. You'll see here it has dried a bit. So you'll see that the brown scales and then the black at the back. So you'll see I'm doing short overlapping stro strokes, a little bit of skin stretching or just uh, keeping it firm. So I'm mimicking here what I would um, expect to get when I visit the barber. So I want to relax, enjoy my shave. And, and focus on the important bits. On that you will know, and if you don't, I'm gonna tell you, that the first power pass, and it really doesn't matter in which, which direction it is, The bulk of your focus and effort must go into the first pass. Everything else after that's just levels above. 
If you sloppy in your first pass, you need to do work harder on your second pass, and that's where you start getting, or your third pass, and that's where you start getting um, skin irritation and issues you shouldn't have. Put in proper strokes in there. Make sure you get as good as a shave on the first pass. And move on. As light as possible. One of my weaknesses in straight razor shaving is um, my prayer tends to float drift over time going in the wrong direction. So at present I'm just conscious of keeping the pressure as light. I've got about 40 hours of growth so to give you indication of what I have. So I push my tongue onto my lip to help push it out, stretch it, so I don't use my fingers. A barber would use his fingers here and stretch and work the little areas. So I use my tongue to manipulate it. So Barber would do a little bit of stretching or pinched stretching. You'll see they do this or they push it together, make a rounding like that and then they work the areas, especially on the lip and the chin, the very tough areas. So let's do the same on the other side, switching hands, left hand, left side. Um, if your fingers are slippery, alone and your problem goes away. Something I've also experimenting with and paying a bit more attention on. If you look at the proper barber, the amount of stretching they do is actually very little. It's more just keeping the skin firm or in position. And so if you've got a, a well prepped skin and you use a shallow blade angle, And you imagine just trying taking off the lather. Then you're gonna really get close shaves.
This razor has got nice audible feedback. I'm not sure if it's um, hearable here in the Amazon rainforest. But it gives a nice feedback and you quickly know if the area is clean. Seth, why don't you ever struggle with small little loose hairs while you're shaving? Or is it just me, this old man that's losing mine on a daily basis like a shedding brush? Maybe um, something on strokes, as guys like the strokes. And it's all supposed to be a cutting motion. What do I mean by that? Maybe if you go back and look at some of the the material I'm showing is the blade is at the angle being pushed that encourages a cutting motion a slicing motion let's call it a slicing motion because the blades at an angle like a guillotine I've talked about, the, about this in some of my, my videos. If you start paying a bit more attention with that blade angle, um, I think you will find a lot more efficiency in your shaves. And cutting capability of the razor. <coughs> So if I go with a grain, remember I shaved like this, but if I go down like this everywhere in my face now. I am BBS. I can look you in the eye and tell you that that is the case. If I go against the grain, then I'll feel a bit more um, resistance in some of the areas. So. <clears throat> it is now up to you to say, Jacques, that's fantastic, awesome, this is exactly what I wanted, now I can go out. Or you want that really silky smooth thing and you do a second pass. Either way, nobody is going to be know what's going on on your face besides you and the people close to you. Like my daughter, she will always tell me, Daddy, that's good, or it's just soft. And my wife and me. So, yeah, I can feel some hairs. It's always the touch areas, always the same ones, the moustache, maybe on the chin. And yeah, so let's go and clean them up. Amazon got a message, Amazon Rainforest. So, very, 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 very good. For the international people, what I also appreciate about um, MSC soaps, it's six ounces, it's not four ounces. It's tallow, it is really hard, I won't say triple malt, but it's a hard firm soap. 
you get plenty, plenty of mileage on it and it's really, <laughs> as I say, he's one of the top global soap makers out there. And he's definitely the champion here. So, um, thanks Fernando for making shaves affordable and awesome locally in South Africa. That feedback I was speaking about. Forty five degree cutting slicing motion. On the tough areas. Once again, small overlapping strokes. Can you see me using the heel, the power part of the blade because it's close to the grip. It produces a whole lot more stability and control. So instead of trying to tackle a very difficult area here and making a mistake, just um, use all of the blade. Also firming your lip, top lip, pulling it over your teeth. It just ensures everything is stable. So you'll see I clean the soap from under my nose so it's clear if you've got a proper soap it will still be plenty slick, plenty of protection.
and then you can confidently hit the areas which is typically difficult. <coughs> So now I can confidently tell you I am BBS doesn't matter which direction I'm going. Yes, a spot I can maybe buff. I've got um, no irritation in my neck, so I'm quite happy. That's a two par shave. A one par shave would have done it as well. So let me um, clean the razor. So first I'm going to just clean the basin of the sink and just add some fresh water. And while I do that, I'm going to run hot water across the blade face and then I use my fingers to strap across the edge. And that is to ensure I get all of this so tallow fats and stuff off the edge and then the rest of the blade face and I rinse the scales and since I'm in a slower mood today and I've got a bit more time we're gonna do the whole nine yards so I've wiped off most of the um, water So the big thing here is not to use um, a high heat because that's when you cause yourself problems and you'll still see there's some water in between the scales. Um, so I'm gonna uh, leave that, I've tapped it out now, but I'm gonna leave this razor open on the windowsill and then when I'm done this razor will get a microcloth treatment and get strapped with another microfiber cloth treatment. It only takes five seconds and then put away. That's the maintenance for this razor. So first out the way. And then just clean the remaining stubble out the sink. So, if you take this lather out, there's plenty to have done a third pass or whatever you needed to do. Especially with the fatty um, animal fat type soaps, um, it is important, it's important for all soaps, irrespective to rinse the brush out properly all the way to the core. What happens if you don't, that soap residue sits at the brush end where it's set, it becomes dry, the brush dries, and that becomes a abrasive residue. So the next time you start using that brush, those bristles wear and you will see shedding. The biggest problem with quality brushes that shed is the lack of proper maintenance. It needs to be thoroughly clean. In fact, when this brush is dry, you should not be capable of smelling it and understanding which um, soap you used. 
These brushes bloom a lot, they're very dense, so I comb mine slightly open and you will see um, in Seth's videos he uses a towel to dry his. I do the same, uh, I'm not going to do that now, but I do that with a brush and I flare it open like this. You'll see how big this knot is, how beautiful this um, brush is. Really, really dense. Um, that also goes to the window so my soap pack is clean okay I can just wipe the soap off the sides and then I can clean it uh, close it what I have come to realize with um, some soaps or most soaps if you leave them open, I know you guys use each day different soap, but if you're somebody that uses soap more than once in a week, um, I enjoy actually using them, leaving them open in the bathroom. Um, the moist and uh, the stuff in the air, I think it helps absorb into the soaps and it just helps them um, be a whole lot easier to hydrate and load. That's what I found, especially with Nando soaps. Not that it needs any assistance. It, it's just, I, I found it very useful. How I pick that up is, I've also got, um, I use soaps to wash my face in the shower. So I would have a, a soap from Nando in the shower. nearly finished but this is how I know because this stands open in the shower and it is absolutely fantastic I've tried it with other soaps exactly the same thing the back just blows my mind right here so I'm gonna wipe the soap off And you can really feel the shea butter in the soap on the skin. Very nice. I do this with cold water um, and the reason is to help some of the, the butters and the fats um, just do not come off as easily so there's still lots of residual slickness here and uh, I leave that because that's good for my skin so that sits and absorbs you can in the meantime do whatever you need to do clean your clean your sink in fact that's what I'm going to do just wipe off the excess water here right um Post shave. I'm going out. My daughter has got a hockey match in, I don't know, about an hour's time. So I'm going to, this is still a little bit moist, so I'm going to put on grooming department, hyaluronic, 2% hyaluronic. For splashes of this, this bottle is nearly gone. And then, I'm going to give this a moment or two and then I'm going to put on sunscreen <clears throat> so for those of you that's interested the Mrs. in-house salon stocks um, sunscreen Dry touch, SPF 50, the stuff is not oily, it's got nice moisturizing capabilities in and it is fantastic sun protection, it's all we use. Um, if you're interested in obtaining um, a, a good quality sunscreen because you can only buy this through select salons, um, 
uh, let me know so I can see how I can facilitate you guys. So this is in a, in a spray. Um, it's already open, which indicates I think it's getting empty. Yeah, because everybody's struggling to get some out. <clears throat> in any case, So you can see I'm laying it on thick, like putty, polyfiller to fill the cracks. And you would think this is a greasy, oily thing that's gonna make you shine and look like a grease ball. <clears throat> Pale as death. So we're just going to uh, let that sit. I'm going to show you what it looks like in a moment. It's really, really quality stuff. That's my shave. I appreciate you guys um, joining me. Yeah, and those that's been following my channel. Appreciate it. 36 minutes, I think that's not bad time. But you will see how this absorbs into the skin. It doesn't give it that oily look. Um, my skin is smooth, so it's reflective. But you'll see it's not, not oily. No irritation in my neck. So by the way, you will see I've got um, red in my neck, but I've got it all over my body. This is my skin. I've got an incredibly sensitive skin. So some insight into, into me. Sorry, we're not done. I quickly want to talk about um, fragrance. Hang on a second. The back, cologne. You can see it's a, a big bottle. Love the stuff, proper. How do I use it? I've obviously used a loom as, a, as my antiperspirant or deodorant. I'm quite generous with the stuff. Uh, quite a couple of nice splashes. And then I put it on my chest and on the back of my neck, not the areas where I've shaved. Okay, and that's it. That's my scent. Thank you. See you guys later.